Hello, I'm Jamez, and me and my friend Harold are going to explain about the analysis of the Black Codes, the Jim Crow laws, and the Selma to Montgomery marches. We hope you like what we have to say. Please enjoy. Jim Crow laws were laws made to segregate whites and blacks. These laws didn't only separate the blacks from the whites, it also disparaged blacks, making them seem no lesser than dogs. The laws were actually named after a white man named Thomas Rice, whose performances mimicked an old black man. Jim Crow laws in many states required black staff separate places to eat, live, and walk. I can mention many other things that were segregated, but I'll just name a few like hospitals, restaurants, buses, fountains, and schools. Heck, even normal places that aren't usually for everyone were segregated for black people. And now I will read to you some Jim Crow laws. A black man can't offer his hand with a white male because it implied being socially a black male can't offer his hand to or any other part of his body to a white woman because he risks being accused of rape. Blacks were not allowed to show affection toward one another in public, especially kissing because it offended whites. If a black person rode in a car driven by a white person, the black person sat in the back seat or back of a truck. Never assert or even intimate that a white person is lying. Never lay claim to or overly demonstrate superior knowledge or intelligence. Never curse a white person. Never laugh derisively at a white person. Never comment upon the appearance of a white female. That concludes my explanation. Back to you, Jameis. Thank you, Harold. Now to me. The Black Codes were a law that wasn't very different from the Jim Crow laws. The only difference between the two is that the black code laws were to restrict us from our freedom and Jim Crow laws were to separate us from white people. Now the black codes were compelling black people to work in labor economy based on low wages or debt. You see the black codes were part of a larger pattern of southern whites trying to suppress the new freedom of emancipated African-American slaves called the freedmen. Now before I go, I will give small examples of the black codes, uh, like things we were pre prohibited from, like this. Pro black people were prohibited from owning their own property. Two, they were prohibited from taking certain jobs. Three, prohibited from voting. And Four, black, black people could be arrested even if they did not have jobs. Did any of this seem fair to any of you? That concludes my explanation. Uh, back to you, Harold, to finish them off. For the first Selma to Montgomery march, when nearly 600 people planned a nonviolent march from Selma to Montgomery on Sunday, March 7th, 1965, it didn't go very well. When they went crossing the Edmund Pettus Bridge, they paused. Sheriff Jim Clark blockaded the marchers with his officers and Alabama state troopers. He told them that they had two minutes to break up the march. Soon after he said this, the deputies attacked. The marchers were clubbed, tear gassed, and trampled. Over 80 marchers ended up in a hospital, and during the confrontation, some had ran all the way back home. This is known as Bloody Sunday. It outraged many people around the country and caused them to join in the second march. For the second march, MLK as well as many other people around the country joined. As they crossed the bridge for the second time, they met the state police officers. This time, when the marchers stopped, they kneeled, prayed, and turned around. Therefore, agreeing with LBJ on not going through with the march, it became known as Turnaround Tuesday. For the third march, this time King had the support of LBJ. The president had Army troops and National Guard forces protect the marchers as they proceeded past the bridge into Montgomery, allowing Martin Luther King to give his speech, how long, not long, on the steps of the state capitol. Nearly 50,000 supporters met the marchers in Montgomery. 
and if the marchers would have made it through the first and second march, they wouldn't have made it to Montgomery because they weren't prepared and supplied well enough. The impact these marchers had on the Voting Act of 1965 was that with the SCLC's dedication, no longer will African Americans have to take the literacy test or be denied the right to vote because of skin color. It also allowed more African Americans to enter political careers, making us more equal as a state. Hello everybody, I'm Jamez Rusmus Burks. And Hill Stewart. And you just watched our video of explaining the Jim Crow laws, the Black Codes, and the Selma to Montgomery March. And uh, we hope you enjoyed it and we hope you learned a lot from it. And my friend Harold here has some things to say to you all, so, so please listen. Okay. Now we are able to say that all men are created equal and are endowed with certain unalienable rights, which are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Because of the dedication of many black people throughout history, we are able to now vote and have a word to be said. We are now seen as equals through the eyes of people and through the eyes of God.